Hello everyone, I'm Tristan Tanner and this is my 2021 In The Bag. I'm here in the beautiful Sedona, Arizona. All this red rock behind me is absolutely incredible. I'm up here doing some hikes and I figured I would show you guys what is in my bag going into the start of the 2021 season. This will be uh, pretty much the exact bag uh, in terms of the actual molds in there that'll be throwing pretty much the whole entire season. Obviously the actual discs might interchange here and there, but this is a bag that I'm comfortable attacking any course, wooded, open, windy, calm, uh, really any situation i'm really confident with the setup i have right now with that being said i'm just going to jump straight into it i'm going to start with my putting putters uh, i've got uh, four putters that are kind of dedicated to putting uh, the main ones that i put from uh, really anywhere from inside the circle to 70 feet depending on the putt are the new royal faith uh, these are all uh, ones that i wipe the stamp on because I like to have the stamp facing forward and up properly the whole time that I am putting or throwing. And what tends to happen on my putting putters is they get little nicks here and there where I wanna put my finger. And when there's the stamp there still, I feel like I have to have the stamp up, but if there's a little nick there, it kind of messes with me. So I like to have these uh, totally blank and these beautiful white ones are sick. I've got like really white, and then these just two kind of like gradient ones into that kind of creamsicle color. That's really nice. Um, but the Royal Faith, I switched to it. You guys saw immediately when uh, I first touched it out of the Royal box and I haven't looked back since. These are absolutely incredible. I will be sticking with these for a while. Uh, and then for a little bit longer putter uh, is a hard pure. And these are, or this one is really, really beat up. It's been in the bag a little over a year now. I do throw it a little bit for some really flippy like hyzer that needs to turn or some like turnover forehands, but it's mostly my jump putter. So if I need a little turnover putt or any sort of jump putt, I'm going to be going to this one. It has so much glide and goes so straight. I'm just so confident with it. Uh, it's going to be in the bag for a long time. I really don't care how flippy it gets. Uh, I just really enjoy jump putting with this one. Now moving into more of my throwing putters, I have, first off, I'll take the ones that I throw backhand first. Um, so for my putters, I do have ones that I only throw backhand and ones that I only throw forehand. I don't really like to interchange them just because I like different plastic types for the two. So first, um, everyone knows the Opto Bite has been in my bag for about three years now. This one specifically has been in there that long. I had I have a blue sparkle one that my good friend Josh Burquest gave me that goes in and out of the bag depending on the tournament, but that one's really special to me. So if there's any chance I'm going to be losing it or having to throw it in a, a tricky situation, I'm probably going to have this one in the bag uh, just because it's not quite as special, but it is still very special. Been in the bag for forever. Flies exactly the same as when I first got it. So the bite, great little utility disc. Uh, that I love to use. And then my two other ones, I have an Opto Pure. This is something I think any of you should check out. Does not matter the skill level. It is just so straight, so workable. Shout out to my boy, Reese Corwin. Uh, this disc is what we call customizable uh, by Reese. So really I can just, I can customize it to have it hold Anheuser, hold Heiser, go dead straight, late flip, late fade. Uh, just so much to do with this disc dependent on nose angle and release point. I've just loved this disc so much. Uh, go check out OptoPures if you haven't already. Next up, I have a VIP Metallic Harp. This is my overstable backhand approach disc. Uh, these ones have a little bit higher shoulder on them than uh, like the base plastic harps or the VIPX or some other like tournament plastic harps. So. This one just feels really nice in the hand. It almost feels like my Pure in a way on the backhand, which just makes it really comfortable. Uh, I can trust this. It's overstable, but it's not super dumpy. So I can, I can control the fade on it. If I want something that's really gonna skip left, I'll probably just disc up to a Justice, which I'll get to in a little bit. But uh, overstable approach disc for backhands, and I'm going with this premium plastic harp. And then for my forehand 
uh, putter shots, I throw the harp uh, as well, but in the hard plastic. So I have this white one that's been in the bag for forever, three years coming up on now, I think, um, but it's just beat up. It's just so nice, nice and warped, but it's hard so it doesn't get that super puddly uh, top that some of the softs or mediums get. But I really love this one. This is straight. I can throw it on a hyzer and flip it up flat and just have it go dead straight. This harp does what my pure does on backhands. I, it's, I can throw it on hyzers. I can throw it on turnovers. As soon as we get in the woods later in the season, uh, I pretty much won't be throwing this one. I'll only be throwing this straighter one. But I do have a pretty new one in the bag all the time for more overstable forehand approaches. Uh, good control. I know it's going to finish right. I can throw it on a little bit more flex lines, things like that. Um, this is my van stamp. I do have some of these left on my website, tristantanner.com. It'll be linked in the top of the description if you want to go check out this beautiful stamp. Now moving on uh, to my mid ranges. First, I have three gatekeepers in the bag right now, varying from understable to overstable. My understable one is a 2019 um, Tor fundraiser stamp from mine that is uh, a VIP gatekeeper. Uh, I've been beating this one up over the off season. I have a yellow special edition that's a little more understable than this that'll probably um, find its way back in the bag for the season. But I really like this one right now. It's not flippy by any means, but if I rip on it flat, it'll get a nice soft hold to the right, uh, which is all I really need out of it. And then I have a tournament gatekeeper. Uh, this is again with the 2020 van stamp on there. Uh, but this is my straight one. So this is throw flat, go straight for a long time, maybe have a touch of fade on the end. These gatekeepers are what I will disc up to if it's a little too windy for the pure. So very rare that I'll go from the pier to the harp. It's going to be more from the pier to the gatekeeper to still have that straight flight, but these just handle the wind a little bit better. And I'll throw these anywhere from 250 feet to 415 feet, depending on the shot that I need. And then I have one more. This is a VIPX one, and this is one of the more overstable VIPX ones that I've ever thrown. This one has a little bit more dome, like not quite pop top, but it's definitely close, really stiff. Uh, and this one is like hammer on it flat and it's going to fade left pretty hard every single time. I can trust this one on a little bit more flex lines, maybe some forehands even with this if I need a little bit lower line than maybe the harp. Uh, but yeah, gatekeeper staple in my bag. You know that if you watch my videos, uh, I really love these things. So also go check these out. Uh, another great disc for any skill level player. Next up, I have a Lucid Justice. Shout out to Miles Sayer. Uh, love these guys. Uh, this Justice is incredible. Got that good juju from this awesome stamp on there. But this is just overstable. You guys all know what a Justice does. It finishes whichever way um, it's spinning. So if you're throwing it on a backhand, it's dumping hard left. And if you're throwing it on a forehand, it's dumping hard right. Uh, I love this thing, super consistent. Uh, I've been throwing it a little bit more this off season. I've found a way to kind of put these nose down with a lot of spin and get a pretty straight flight for about 350. And then it hooks up super hard left at that uh, final justice fade. So um, definitely something I'm going to be throwing more in 2021 than I did in 2020. But uh, again, I just love having uh, other people's stamps in my bag. And so shout out to Miles Sayer again. Moving up, fairway drivers. Uh, I'm gonna go, we'll start out with this. This is my Opto Vision. Uh, this disc has been out of production since before I started playing, but if you can find yourself any of these, they're really, really nice. I use it for mostly for rollers and for some flip up forehands. I aced hole 12 at Harmony Bends with a Vision this past year uh, during the Mid-America Open, but this thing, it's kind of a trick shot disc. I don't throw it on air shots very often. It's more for kind of uh, like late flip rollers or some low ceiling rollers um, and then just tricky forehands in the woods. Uh, but really love the vision, super flippy, um, but really usable. Next, I have two Explorers in the bag, um, both again, 2019 Van Stamp, 2020 Van Stamp. The 2019 one, this pink one is more understable. Uh, it's it's still not f under like flippy by any means, but 
if I throw it flat, it's gonna get some nice hold to the right and probably get back flat to the finish. I can rip this on some hyzer flips, more nose down and get it to work kind of an inside out line, um, but still I can keep it on long hyzers, long turnovers. And what I've been learning about the Explorer is that the more and more I throw it, it goes so far. I can push these out over 500 uh, in some slight tailwinds if I need to, and they just go so straight. I out throw my Ballista Pros or my Rive sometimes with these Explorers. It's absolutely insane. Um, and then this white one with the 2020 stamp is a little bit more overstable. I can throw it flat, count on some finished lefts. Generally, this is the one I'm going to be going with if I'm throwing an Explorer hyzer or even a straight shot. I can just rip on it a little bit harder and it's just going to go straight and have a nice little consistent fade at the end. Next. I have three Pioneers in the bag, uh, ranging from un not understable but straight to overstable. Um, this orange one, mostly for forehands. I don't think I'll ever throw this one backhand in a tournament, uh, but nice little hyzer flip up to flat with a forehand, go straight, finish. This is going to be my longest flying Pioneer. Um, I will use this one as well for some like quick flip tomahawks, another thing that I've been throwing a little bit more now. Um, on some holes, uh, just because I found a lot of control with it. And yeah, so this is my, my straighter one. And then I have uh, a, a special edition and a gold line. Uh, the special edition is kind of my just middle of the pack one. This is going to be my main, uh, my main forehand disc. Uh, can work it on some flex lines, straight with a lot of finish, hyzers, anything I need with this one. Uh, yeah, really enjoy the special edition just because it has a little bit flatter feel than both the gold line and the pioneer or gold line and the opto generally. And then my last one, there are some of these gold burst pioneers that have a much stiffer rim and a little bit flatter shape, more similar to the special edition. And these are the most overstable pioneers that I can find. Uh, these like rip on them on Anheuser and they're just dumping out of it right away. Uh, so if you find some of these, you'll know when you have one because it is just super meat hook. Uh, this one I'll throw for uh, some longer overhands, both thumbers and tomahawks and hyzers, flex shots. This is one I'll throw on backhand spike hyzers and flexes as well. Uh, this is probably my most thrown one out of the three Pioneers just because I throw it both ways. But yeah, the gold line Pioneer, if you need overstable, is definitely the way to go. Next up... Uh, this next disc I qualify as more of a control driver, uh, and that is the getaway. Uh, I can get distance driver distance, but it uh, needs less room to work in the air. These are both pretty overstable. I've got this lucid one, uh, pretty high dome. Uh, that's the, really the only ones that I will throw, and very stiff. Uh, so stiff rim, stiff flight plate. This one I can rip on Anheuser, and it's going to flex out. This is the disc that makes it so I don't really have to bag uh an enforcer. I used to bag the enforcer until I started throwing these getaways and they're just so consistent, overstable, know what's going to happen. And then uh, this Fusion X one is really, really overstable. It's almost, it's, it's pushing being more overstable than my Pioneers actually, uh, but a little bit longer. So still that kind of control driver distance, closer to distance driver distance. Um, but this is a Fusion X getaway and this thing is just flex lines, spike hyzers. I like this feel for backhand slightly more than the Pioneer. When I'm throwing the hyzer, I feel like it comes out a little bit cleaner and I can get a little bit better pushing flight uh, with this one. But the Fusion X Pioneer or Fusion X Getaway, very overstable. Next up to distance drivers. Uh, two main forehand distance drivers are, I have only have two Ballista Pros in the bag right now. Uh, we'll get to why that is in a little bit, but... I have an opto and a gold line. The opto is, they both fly very similar. The, the gold line might be slightly more overstable, but both of these, I can just rip on a hyzer line. They'll probably get up to flat, push for a little while, and then fade right pretty hard. Uh, very consistent. I can throw these on long flexes out to 500 feet. I can throw them on long hyzers to 420, 430. Uh, and just for forehands, I don't know what I'd do without the Ballista Pro. They're just fast, feel great, come out clean, 
and are just very consistent. Um, but both of these do pretty much the same thing. The white one, however, I will throw for some backhands, uh, some like hyzer flip to bomb shots. Uh, and this blue one, I have been rolling uh, for some longer sky rollers. Um, but generally not gonna be throwing these on backhands very much. And that is because I have the new Royal Rive in the bag. So I have three of these. Uh, if you haven't checked out the Rive, they came in the Royal Mystery Box. They're absolutely incredible. I've got three of them from, uh, this is kind of uh, my flippier one. This one almost flies like my Ballista Pros, uh, but I found it's a little bit shorter. So this is my one for forehands. I've been throwing like 750, 800 foot rollers out at Vista with this thing. It absolutely bombs. It's a nice flatter one. This one's 170, as opposed to these other ones that are a little bit heavier. And yeah, I just really love this one for kind of rollers and some sh shorter forehands than the Ballista Pro. And then I've got two yellow ones. Uh, this is one that was in Emerald for a while. And then this is uh, my most overstable one. Um, this one I'll throw for overstable forehands. I can flex this one a little bit. And then this one is my long hyzer backhand disc. I can uh, throw it hard, flat. It might move slightly right, but it's gonna finish left hard every time. Um, really loving the Rive for my main distance driver slot this year. It's, uh, I've always been a Ballista Pro lover, but the Rive uh, kind of took over that. It, I've never thrown a disc that flies farther on a hyzer line than the Rive. It just pushes so long and is so consistent, uh, really filled a slot that I've been missing for a little while. Uh, and then the last complement in the distance driver lineup is the uh, uh, Bio Defender. This is a nice domey one. Uh, and this one is more just for overstables. So I can rip this one flat. It's going left every time. I can get it on some distance if I really put it on some ante, but it's not something I'm gonna be going to for a distance shot, but I really, have been enjoying having this back in the bag uh, for just those overstable spike hyzers, flex shots, and when it gets a little bit more windy. Next, my utility discs. Uh, first one is the Prime Witness. Most people know this disc specifically. It is so beat up, so warped. I think it is the flippiest disc in anyone's bag that is playing on tour full time. It is just so understable. I throw it for Skamahawks, which is a shot where you throw a sky roller line and it flips all the way over and kind of flies like a, a thumber. Uh, I also throw this weird grenade shot that flips up and flies a little bit with this thing and all sorts of other trick shots. I can throw down like really flippy rollers that bounce right, uh, jump putts even sometimes from like a low ceiling because it'll flip, it'll actually flip up and have some turn on a jump putt. Um, which is just something good to have. I probably throw it once every five or six rounds, maybe not even that much, probably once every 10 rounds, but the time I need it, I'm really glad I have it. And then the last disc in my bag is the Opto X Stiletto. This thing is so overstable. I think it's the most overstable disc that we have in our lineup. I can rip this on forehand flexes, backhand spike hyzers, grenades, but I've mostly been using this recently for really long overhands. I've been able to throw this overhand out to almost 400 feet, which is crazy because it's something I've never really experimented too much with before in the past, but just super long panning overhands opened up birdieing some holes consistently that I haven't been able to birdie consistently in the past. So uh, always stoked on the Opto X Stiletto. Uh, some other things that I have in my bag, I have a, a little chalk bag. I don't use it very often, but when I need it, um, just the getting the sweat off the hands is absolutely incredible. I have been carrying the E4 uh, kind of on and off with the Core Pro. I haven't quite decided which one I'm going to carry mainly in 2021, but both bags are absolutely amazing. The E4 has a little bit more storage for other things outside of the discs, whereas the Core Pro... Um, kind of holds more in the disc department, but less in the other things department. So it just kind of depends on what you want. But I've been uh, probably gonna be sticking with the e, uh, E4 here for the next couple of weeks, probably gonna be carrying it at Vegas, but again, I'm not quite sure yet. A uh, couple other things I have, always gotta have the Bushnell. 
Shout out to the guys at Bushnell. Uh, this is the Sport 850, really useful, especially in practice rounds. Uh, kind of, I can figure out what distances I want to be at on the par fours, making it so I don't have to bite off quite as much off the tee and just get in that money spot. Uh, and then the last thing that I always have to have with me is tape, because the way I grip the disc, I get really bad blisters on my pinky and sometimes here on my ring finger. And I always just have to tape my pinky finger or else it's just not going to uh, work for me. This It kind of plagued me at a couple of events last year before I figured out um, how to tape it and make it work. But tape's an essential for me. And that is everything in my bag right now. Thanks everyone for tuning into my 2021 in the bag. Uh, let me know what ex events you're excited to see me throw this year. I'm really excited to get back on the road, get to Vegas. It's going to be a good year. So like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, share this with your friends. And I'll see you guys in the next video.